High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. High school sports fans, Varsity Media is the exclusive live stream media partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of soccer, volleyball, field hockey, and football, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. approaching just a few weeks away we've got one of the best rivalries in Queens taking place in Nassau Boulevard from Charles Lindbrook Boulevard it is the Battle of Francis Lewis Boulevard as the Holy Cross Knights take on the St. Francis Prep Terriers on the Varsity Media Sports Network today's game is sponsored by Maspeth Federal Savings Bank and Bagel Parlor And we welcome you into the broadcast booth. He's Mike Spina. I'm John Perez. And Mike, you know, two wins for St. Francis Prep, three wins for Holy Cross. But in a rivalry game, you can just throw those out the window. Uh, records mean nothing when it comes to rivalries. You could be 8-0 versus 0-8. But rivalry football, there's nothing like it. it. And you know you're getting close to Thanksgiving weekend. The weather's cold. You're ready for that turkey. National anthem's going off right now. It's great. It, it's exciting. And like I said, throw out the records. You never know what's going to happen today. Oh, beg your pardon. We'll push right through that. But either way, Holy Cross comes into this game with two of the best players, not just in Queens, but the rest of the Catholic League, as we're going to see Nick Woods and Isaac Loudon, two really good uh, athletic players for the Knights. Yeah, well, Woods is a really tough running back. He runs hard. He's quick. And, you know, with the win today, he's going to have to be a big factor. You know, it's going to be tough to throw the ball. You know, so, you know, Gladden's going to have to get some short slants, some short passes, because when you're going against the win, that's going to make a big difference today. Meanwhile, on the other side for St. Francis Prep, they're a team that primarily runs the ball, and they'll be led by Troy Faison and Jonathan Nguyen. Well, you know, same thing. Uh, you know, Faison is a real good running back, a young kid, only a 10th grader, uh, 273 yards this year. He's got one touchdown, so they're going to look to pound the ball a little bit with him. You know, Nujan, you know, he's got 244 yards, same thing, but he's got more receiving yards, so they're going to look to get him the ball quick and let him use his speed. Nguyen, one of the pit bulls on this Terrier squad. Well, these two teams looking for a victory today, and what are the keys for this victory here today as St. Francis Prep and Holy Cross battle center stage here at Mitchell Field? Well, obviously, with the weather being the way it is, I mean, sometimes this becomes a two-quarter game um, I, with, you know, St. Francis Prep, they're a wing T team, so they're going to have to win the battle up front. They're going to have to handle their emotions and, you know, expect the unexpected. St. Francis Prep, get off to a really fast start. Uh, they're going to have to take care of the ball, and they're going to have to do a real good job blocking any open field. It is St. Francis Prep. It's Holy Cross. We're ready to go as Holy Cross comes onto the field in their white uniforms and St. Francis Prep in their reds and their special homecoming 
Reds at that. And it should be a fun one here today. It's the Battle of the Boulevard. Both coaches saying that it doesn't matter what the records are, where these guys are in the standings, that it's always a fun matchup, and both of these teams are going to have to execute to pick up the victory today. And, of course, for standing purposes, this is not a league game as St. Francis Prep in the AA-1 and Holy Cross in the AA-2. Well, you both both teams want to get off to a good start today. You know, they want to get some momentum going into the playoffs. Again, we said it. Throw the records out. Let's play football. Let's see what happens. It's very seldom that you see the red jerseys, and that just shows the importance of the game for St. Francis Prep. And Rich Carroll, a St. Francis Prep alum, and Tim Smith, of course, he bleeds green. Two of the more storied coaches in the Catholic League as we get set to go. And it'll be Anton Williams to kick it off to the Terriers. And we've got football Sunday evening here in the Catholic League as Peyton Buchanan returns it and is brought down at the 20-yard line as the Knights rally to the ball carrier. And real good kickoff coverage. Everybody stayed in their lanes. Uh, four or five guys on the tackle. So... They'll be starting at the 22-yard line and going against a very, very stiff win. So with their wing T offense, the win shouldn't affect them as much as it might affect Holy Cross. Rich Carroll says that nobody's had a better uh, season at handling the quarterback position than Tommy Zulo. And Zulo, the numbers on the year you see right there, will pass 1,000 passing yards this season. Last week, 19 for 32, 262 yards, a couple of TDs and an INT, and for a team that really runs the wing T, Zulo hasn't been asked to pass a lot this year, but when he has, he's been efficient. Yeah, he's done a nice job. He's almost over 1,000 yards. I remember seeing him week one, and there were some question marks, and he's definitely gotten better as the season progressed. First give is to Troy Face on the sophomore, and he stood up as the Knights send everybody in the kitchen sink on the first play, as we'll meet the rest of the offense. For prep, it's Faison Buchanan, Valvo, Cordarolo, Julian Melendez, the tight end, Vesup, Brown, Keller, Proponis, and Nicholas Francesi. St. Francis Prep falling 28-22 last week to St. Peter's and had a chance to speak to their defensive coordinator, Jerry Natale, and he said, it's a matter of what team is going to show up. If it's a team that shows up last week, against St. Peter's will be okay. St. Peter's, of course, in first place in the AA-1 and a good carry up the middle for the Terriers as that was Frankie Valvo, the junior from Middle Village, with the big pickup. Didn't get a carry last week and gets a gain of 13. Well, right now, Holy Cross is doing a good job loading the box and, you know, real good call, just running a little guard trap up the middle because if you hit those traps when everybody stunts, there's nobody in the middle of the field. And Mike, here are some playmakers for Holy Cross. Olari King, Servito, Hester, Alexander, Woods, Toppin, Magali, Avon, McMahon, and Julian Garcia. Ball hits the carpet. And Valvo pops on top of it. As that'll be a loss of six. And out comes the punting unit for the Terriers. And, you know, if you remember, we talk about this all the time. Special teams is a third of the game. And it started with the kickoff, great coverage. Now you're going to see, you know, St. Francis Prep have to punt into a very, very stiff win. So Holy Cross should get real good field position. Michael Dermody set to punt it away from the 25-yard line, has trouble handling it, and he's brought down just shy of the end zone. Ball comes loose, and they'll say he was down at the one-yard line. Cross thought that they had the touchdown, but either way, if you don't get the touchdown, this is the second best thing, and the Knights will be rolling from the one-yard line. Yeah, I just said special teams is a big part of the game. You know, you're punting into the wind, but your center is punting with the wind, you know, coming at him. So he's got the win. So the, the center basically just let the ball sail on him, and here we go, one-yard line. That was Christopher Bream, the junior, who scooped it up. And now Holy Cross sends out. Anton Williams making his first career varsity start. And can't think of better field position for the young guy. Trudges forward, and one play, and the Knights are on the board. One play for the new guy, and a touchdown. Can't think of a better efficiency 
for Anton Williams. Now, nah, listen, you're a sophomore coming up to varsity. Get on the center and have to run a one-yard quarterback sneak. You know, you said it. It's not. That's a great way to start. Confidence. You put St. Francis Prep right on their heels. And so for the PAT, this will be Tom Gilvary, the junior, Parker Zoles to hold. And a 6-0 lead for the Knights in the Battle of the Boulevard. Kick is up, short. And the only thing that's gone wrong for Holy Cross through the first couple of minutes of this ball game, but Holy Cross with a 6-0 lead thanks to the one-yard score by Anton Williams. And we'll take a break here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network. The home for New York High School sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Holy Cross with a 6-0 lead as Peyton Buchanan watches the ball go into the end zone. And Tommy Zullo and the rest of the St. Francis Prep offense will start off at their 20-yard line. It was a three and out and then a botch snap of the punt. That was picked up and downed by Christopher Bream. That set up the one-yard touchdown run for Anton Williams. All right, should be no panic right now. But you want to make sure that you get at least a, a first down or two first downs to stop this momentum. Again, you know you're going against the wind. You don't want to get yourself down 14, 21 points in the first quarter and then have to play catch up all day. This is a very young St. Francis prep team at that too. Nearly two thirds of their rosters are either juniors or sophomores. Including Zulo the junior and two sport athlete at that. On first down, Valvo stacked up. Well, right now, Holy Cross is winning the battle up front. Prep is having a lot of trouble moving guys off the line of scrimmage right now. There's an eight-man box, and you're going to have to mix it up a little bit. You're going to, even with against the win, you're going to have to throw the ball a little bit. Rich Carroll, the head coach for St. Francis Prep, and like he said, numerous times throughout the week and throughout the call with us was that you never know what to expect when it comes to Holy Cross and St. Francis Prep. I don't think he expected a bad snap on the first special teams play of the game, but nonetheless, the Terriers trailing by six and on the low snap, a quick sweep near side. This is Giuseppe Gregoriano, and Gregoriano, the senior from Whitestone, who had three tackles last week, gets his first carry of the ball game before being stood up by Terrence Avon, the senior. Well. What was interesting on that is the defensive line shifted right before the ball was snapped. So St. Francis Prep had no idea who to block. So guys were coming untouched. Avin came untouched from that hangar spot, and now you put yourself in a double-stick situation. Third and 15, you know you're not throwing the ball against this win deep, so advantage Holy Cross right now. Even one of the best players in the secondary for Holy Cross as Zulo rolls out, steps up in the pocket, now trudges forward and brought down after the pickup. Kyle Toppin makes his first tackle, the transfer from Hudson Catholic. And he's been called a run plug and gets his first big hit on the Terriers QB. Yeah, only a junior. Nice, nice job on this, on the flush. You see there's a real good pass rush just holding him up enough. And forcing a punt on fourth down and seven. And so Michael Dermody, the junior, once again, set to strike it away. Better snap this time. And it's a short punt at that. And takes a Knights bounce at the 20-yard line. Or 25-yard line, so a net of five and good field position again for the Knights. Actually, it was a minus two on the punt. Go. So Cross will be starting again in great field position at St. Francis Prep, 21-yard line. Uh, 
winner will be announced Red. at the third quarter. The other team. The other team. And so now Holy Cross, it's not exactly the one yard line, but good field position at that as Anton Williams got the start at quarterback, but we will see a platoon system. Yandel Javier, the junior from Glendale, set to take over, a very young guy and growing into the quarterback spot as he gives it off on first down. This is Terrence Alexander, the senior from St. Albans, Queens, rocking into the five yard line after the big pickup. Yeah, play was originally going left, saw nothing there, made one nice little cut, brought it all the way to the outside on the right-hand side. First and goal at the six-yard line. Well, we'll take another look, and this offensive line up front doing a good job for the Knights. Almost looked like a little confusion with the fullback going behind the quarterback on that. I don't think that was intentional. Either way, a good 15-yard gain. Javier under center, the give again, nice pitch. Here's Isaac Glauden, but St. Francis Prep sniffs it out. Good tackle in the backfield, reading it all the way. That's Giuseppe Gregoriano, the senior from Whitestone with the TFL. Oh, great job staying home on the reverse. Maybe a little bit too cute when you're going straight ahead. Now all of a sudden you run a reverse. You go from first and goal at the five, five, six yard line. Now you're down... Six yards on that, so now you're looking at second to goal from the 11. So after the loss of five, the Knights, yeah, like you said, dealing with second and goal, and this is a Knights team that's coming off a 28-12 loss to St. Joe's by the sea. In fact, they've lost two in a row. That coming after big wins over Cardinal Spellman and Kennedy Catholic, where they outscored both opponents 74-6 to in both games. Since then, if Given up a bevy of points as Javier the give. Here's Alexander again, chugging forward and wrestled down. Good tackle by Aiden Alvia, the junior from Jackson Heights. He's seen as the old school soul of this St. Francis prep defense. Yeah, we're going to be calling his name a lot today. Did a real nice job trying to run a little bit of a bounce or what we call a buck sweep. And Alvia just did a really nice job staying in his lane, making a real nice hawk roll tackle. There's Isaac Lawton, the senior from Ozone Park, and somebody who Tim Smith says is going to surprise a lot of people. And, in fact, he's one of the best players in the CHSFL. We have not seen the ball thrown to him yet. We saw him on the reverse. But as he lines up on the right side of the screen, we get a whistle and a timeout taken by the Knights with 5.37 to go in the first. I would assume after the way they kicked the extra point that this is probably two down situation because even if you don't get it, you're going to still pin them down anywhere from the six yard line to the five yard line. And you can see that prep is struggling right now to move the ball. So probably thinking in this timeout right now, you know, we can run the ball twice. We can throw the ball, whatever you want to do. The, the whole playbook is open right now. Well, while we have this break, we'll have you know that Varsity Media is the home for all Nassau County semifinal and championship games. Go to varsitymediapass.com to order. I think Mike Spina has uh, plans to be in that game, but he'll watch the replay afterwards. Huge win for the Chiefs yesterday against Farmingdale. And I thought it was really interesting, that back page spread that they had of you being lifted up by the rest of your team like Rudy. And uh, it, it's great to see. You're going to have to, uh, you know, put that uh, in a frame and, and display it in the Spina den. Nah, it had nothing to do with anything. It's a total team effort. I'll tell you right now, it's, it's a great place to coach. Love my kids, you know. It's it's just it's a special year right now, but we got a lot of work to do. It was week seven. That's all it was. Week seven. All right, well we'll see, but hoping to be in that semifinal and final matchups. Place your order today. So Holy Cross, third and goal from the six yard line. Back to pass as Javier floats it. Back of the end zone, incomplete. He tried to fit it high to Jeremy Shaw, the senior. Couldn't haul it in, and you're right, Mike. We'll see if Tim Smith treats this as four-down territory because at least conventional thinking is if St. Francis Prep drives all the way down the field 94 yards, I think you just have to tip your cap. 100%. I, I probably would have rather seen some kind of a run, 
they're having success because they're running in your old old school pro I formation, and and they're running straight ahead and getting yards. When they're starting to go east and west, not north and south, that's when they've had a little bit of trouble. That ball just sailed. Um, again, you, you're throwing the ball with about a 20, 25 mile an hour wind at your back, and it just sailed on them. So now you're bringing up fourth and goal. Probably going to run. Probably going to pass the ball again. Terrence Alexander in the backfield, Glauden and McMahon on the left side. It's the give. Alexander waltzes into the end zone. Touchdown. Actually, that's a great call. They went with a, a buck sweep on that. And they actually got real good angles to block. They ran a tight end wing. They outformationed them. Nice job. And let's take another look. And good job on the reverse. And daylight for Alexander as he trudges in the second rushing touchdown of the day. Well, the key to that play was number 72, Nick Severdivio. He did a great job with his reach block. He sealed in the defensive end, and he went in untouched. Knights will go for two. And straight up the gut, nice and easy for Holy Cross. Two points. As they waltz into the end zone and take a 14-0 lead with 5.24 to go. In the first quarter, we'll take another look and good blocking up front. That's just a very, very powerful run by number 49. Unfortunately, he's not on our roster right here. But I'll tell you, he, that's a bull run right there. Just a straight ISO right up the middle. Apologize to that young man for not being able to give him his credit. Well, either way, for the Knights, they go up 14-0 and couldn't have scripted a better start. As the shadow's creeping in. And a short kick by Williams. Spins out of bounds, a good field position for the Terriers. Well, this is a big possession right now for prep. They're not starting inside there, 5, 10, yard line. They got great field position, just a missed kick. Should be a five-yard penalty from where the ball yeah. went out of bounds. And so it'll be spotted at the 39-yard line. Nice crowd coming in for St. Francis Prep as they honor their seniors today. Also, it is homecoming for them. I think it's great, and this game always sells out when it's at Queens, uh, you know, in Queens, whether it's at Holy Cross or whatever field is out there. But uh, good to see everybody make the trek out to Nassau County, Holy Cross fans uh, as well. The school separated. Two schools separated by two and a half miles, both sides. So uh, there's one bus line, the Q76, that depending on where you're picking it up and getting off, you're either riding with a bunch of Holy Cross students or you're dealing with a bunch of prep students. And I'm sure there's cross-pollination, and these guys have all grown up with each other too in different pockets of Queens. I'm sure they all played somewhere together, some kind of peewee in travel football and, you know, these are the games where in between the lines right now, you don't like your opponent. You know, we talked about this actually yesterday. You know, our Farmingdale rivalry is one of the best around. But we also said that in 10 years from now, you guys will probably be best friends. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to talk about games like this. You know, they were talking about last year. We talked about two years ago. It gives you a great conversation, you know, when you grow up. Some of my best friends are from my arch rival high school upstate in Pearl River. You know, and... These are guys that were in my wedding party, but yet we're on the field. We didn't like each other. Yeah, no, it's 100% true, and that's what Rich Carroll said about some of his old Holy Cross alum. Zulo flushed out of the pocket, throws it away as he gets brought down. Good rush coming as that was Donovan Muhammad in there as well as Avon. Yep. Terrence Avon again. Starting to call his number a lot. 
What I like that he didn't go high on the tackle. You know, sometimes when you get that free shot at a quarterback, you know, you, your, your adrenaline starts going and you want to just go after him and hit him high. And sometimes, you know, that, that draws a flag. He did a nice job staying low. You could see, though, the struggle right now for prep going against the win. They can't get their running game going. The their passing game is struggling. You know, this is uh, a big series for them. Zulo drops it off, picked off. Back the other way. It's Isaac Glauden. And Glauden still on his feet, will not be brought down. Gets past Vesup and takes on the Terriers offense again as Zulo is picked. And this Holy Cross defense has come to play in the first. And you see the excitement. You see the emotion over there. The ball just floated. And that's what happens when you're throwing the ball into a, a strong wind. you got to have that point down. If that point is up, it's going to float. And it's exactly what happens here. They're trying to run a waggle. He gets flushed, which was two plays ago. But he gets flushed out of the pocket, and the ball just floats. And so for Holy Cross, doing a good job. Recovering on special teams. And now their defense coming to play as they'll set up shop at the 35-yard line, already ahead two scores. And Anton Williams back in the gun as he tries to nudge ahead and brought down in the backfield. And that's a good tackle by A.J. Brown, the sophomore from Baldwin. Yeah, very interesting that all of a sudden now they went to the spread formation. Here you see the interception right here by Glowden. I actually thought he had a shot of getting all the way to the sideline, but that's a good job holding him up. Even though he doesn't tackle him right there, you know, he does a good job holding him up, and then basically the pursuit comes in. But, again, all three possessions have started on St. Francis prep side. Williams hasn't passed yet, so now he drops back. Throws it down the field, has a man, Shaw, and it goes through his mitts. I don't know if that was an intentional back shoulder or underthrow, but that's a good ball right there. Giuseppe Gregoriano in coverage. And I'm sure Jeremy Shaw right now, when he watches the film on this, would probably say, this is my bad, I, I had this. Yeah, and Shaw's somebody who's usually sure-handed and was a natural fullback tight ends, but seen as a wide receiver over the past, uh, past few weeks. So he's been lining up outside, but has those tools of being a good blocker and because of his hands and his agility, able to get down the field. And sure that I'm sure that he wishes he had that one back. What's interesting, though, is right now Holy Cross is going for the jugular. They know they have the win, the great field position, they're throwing a the ball. Again, is this two-down situation? Third and 11. Williams, the rollout, the southpaw, short dart, and overshoots his target, going for Shaw again. As St. Francis Prep brought the rush, and that was Julian Melendez in the backfield. Yeah, that's a tough throw going in as a lefty, going to your right and throwing the ball all the way across your body. So to me, this is almost a wasted possession, only because they're, they're moving the ball so well on the ground and, and just chunks of yards, chunks of yards, almost every time they touch the ball, and then they go pretty much with a couple passes, and now they're actually punting. Now, again, you know, their defense is really playing well right now and prep is struggling, but they still would have pounded it. Well, it gets pounded through the end zone. And so only a 16-yard punt after the touchback as the Terriers will take over on the 20-yard line with 2.54 to go in the first quarter. Well, we mentioned these two teams playing in different brackets. Of course, we could bring up the standings for St. Francis Prep, and they're coming out of the AA-1. And St. Francis Prep currently in seventh place, trying to move up in the standings. Uh, they just lost to St. Joe's by the Sea and still have uh, a ton of 
ton of room to make up and not a lot of time. There's Troy Faison on first down. Scampers up ahead. And tough to bring down the sophomore and dual athlete. Yeah, he's a tough runner. I mean, I remember that from week one when I called the game with you. But right now, Holy Cross has got eight men in the box. Prep is having a hard time winning that battle, you know, from the line of scrimmage. And we talked about that in the pregame. What team is going to win the battle up front? Games are won up front. Offense and defensive line, they dictate the game. Your skill players make plays, but if your offensive line is not blocking for them, your skill players can't make plays. Your linebackers make a lot of tackles when your D-line is soaking up double teams and everything else. So right now, first quarter, Holy Cross has got the battle won. Second and five, two minutes to play. First quarter, Zulo spins it far side, incomplete. Tried to stretch it towards Peyton Buchanan. And Buchanan usually sure-handed, that 5'11 frame, but just out of his reach, and that'll bring up third and five. Yeah, just a simple out route that he's got to hit that. And he's going to the short side, which I like to call going short side on the out so he's not throwing totally against the win. You know, that's an easy throw that has to be made. Zulo hasn't completed a pass in three attempts, and here come the Terriers, 0 for 3 on third down, looking to convert. Man in motion is Faison. Zulo, pressure coming. Fires, Buchanan, got it. First down. Pickup of six is Peyton Buchanan. Plants that foot in there, and the Terriers have a first down. They'll move the sticks. Which a great job by Zulo on this. This was supposed to be a screen to the left. And you see the lineman all release. Sees that the screen's not there, rolls to his right, and just takes a safety valve right here. That's a great play by Zulo. He hasn't had a great first quarter, but that's a great play to keep this drive alive, which probably could get them through the quarter now against the wind. And for Zulo, just trying to find a rhythm too. Hasn't exactly had the easiest of times. He's been hurried on every snap. And a slew of flags coming, and this will be against the Terriers, and will move them back. Now, again, did they jump because of the shift by Cross? Holy Cross shifted for the second time this game, and as soon as they shifted, somebody jumped. So that's definitely a design by Cross. Zulo, the junior from Flushing, and someone who's been seen as the field general. Obviously, that's what you want out of your quarterback, but Rich Carroll saying the strides that he's made as a vocal leader from his times at seven-on-sevens and in the weight room and now throughout the season have been really remarkable as he's kept an even head, but on the first down run. What he, I like right now, if you look at that picture, this 11 green helmets to the football. Not one or two. 11. That's, that's a team that's well coached. Now, my curiosity is right now, you got 123 in running. You got second down, double sticks. Does Coach Smith start to use his timeouts and make them punt the ball against the wind? Or does he keep them? Well, Smith patrolling that sideline, but not going over to the official to at least signal it yet. As we've got a minute to go, and Buchanan goes in motion. But the straight give up the middle, it's Frankie Valvo. And Valvo devoured. And there you say again, the rally to the football by the Knights. And a bunch of them in there, Servito, along with Toppin, Lucas Russo. And that's that same guard trap that they ran on the first series for eight, nine yards. So they have something going on with the guard trap. Nice catch by Buchanan before. We'll see if Zulo goes that way, but they go back to the well. As that was Valvo once again. And Valvo right towards the first down marker. And they'll give it to the Terriers. And that should do it for the first quarter, you would think. 
when the clock resumes with 13.8 seconds remaining. And it went right back to the bread and butter. Guard trap, got the yard and a half that they needed, and that was close. I was actually curious if they were going to have to measure that. From up here, that was very, very close. But good job by Prep. Get out of the first quarter right now. As bad as it was, all right, now they have the wind at their back. They can change this whole game. It's been all good for Holy Cross. They lead it 14 0 in this year's Battle of the Boulevard on the Varsity Media Sports Network. This is Solomon Thomas with the New York Jets, and you're watching Varsity Media. High school sports fans, Varsity Media is the exclusive live stream media partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of soccer, volleyball, field hockey, and football, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide through our announcers? Start of the second quarter, we reverse the field and Zulo gets the snap and another false start against St. Francis Prep. Again, shift on the D-line, this time the running back jumps. So they're definitely having trouble with the shift. Three penalties in the first quarter or check that, three penalties now in the first half for 15 yards. And that'll push the Terriers back again. When we talk about the Knights defense and what they've been able to do, just looking up and down, uh, you've got Bream with a tackle, uh, both Avon and Servito both with tackles for losses. Glauden has the interception and Magali doing a good job as well. He had a pair of tackles in the opening quarter. Zulo one for four for 11 yards in the first quarter, and the interception. Sees the pressure coming, gets a block, chugs ahead, and angles out of bounds. That's a nice scramble right there for 10 yards. Nobody was open downfield, but you see the minute they got the wind at their back, they were sending four receivers deep. They were running four verticals, trying to get them, get some momentum going right now, maybe hit a big, uh, big play, get a score. Covered well, but you know, good scramble. That's one thing about Zulo, too, that he's grown in, in that when his wide receivers aren't open, he's not afraid to run, and that might be uh, a huge learning curve for first-time varsity quarterbacks because they feel like they have to throw it into a tight window, and that could lead uh, to the interceptions. That's what happened on the first play, and good to see him at least get some positive yardage. Well, maybe that one play kind of woke them up a little bit. Second and seven, the give Buchanan. And he's devoured by the defense. Good tackle by Kyle Toppin. Toppin commuting from Brooklyn every day to get to Flushing. Of course, he's never gone to school anywhere close to where he lives in Brooklyn, tr the transfer from Hudson Catholic, and now moving over to Flushing. I'm curious to see what the commute is there. And it's a third down and four. Zulo, pressure coming, and dumps it near side towards Troy Faison. Real good pressure with the defensive line. It was a waggle, which is a bootleg, and he wanted to get outside going to his left, and there's three defensive linemen for Cross just sitting right in his face. So they forced him to stop. He had nowhere to go. You could see his frustration. You know, when the palms go up to the sky, you can see he's a little frustrated. And so the special teams unit coming out for the Terriers. And a new punter at that. It'll be Nick Amadio, the junior, set to strike it away. And Glauden back to receive the punt. Amadio. Spinning punt, takes a terrier bounce, and continues to roll. And it is brought down at the 19-yard line. And so a good punt 
for the Terriers, a 34-yard punt as the Knights will take over at their own 19-yard line. I don't think we're going to see three passes in a row on this series. I think they're going to go back to their old-school football, get in the eye formation, and, and start trying to go right at them. Well, and it certainly helps when you've got a big body like Alexander, uh, excuse me, like Williams back there who can trudge ahead. And, yeah, they've had a good running game, and now it'll be Yandiel Javier. And you're right, the Knights haven't completed a pass yet today. Give up the middle, fighting forward, flag is down. Gonna get either a horse collar or a face mask on that. But they did, they went right back into the eye formation, back to their bread and butter. And I was actually wrong. The way the flag came out right after the first initial contact, they were actually calling a hold on Holy Cross. You could have made the argument for the horse, horse collar. But yeah, I'm with you on the hold. And there's the standings for Holy Cross. Looking to move up, get a chance to get into that two spot against Zavarian and Mount St. Michael's. Perfect, at least in league play. Five and one overall. First and 20 from the nine yard line. Glauden goes in motion and Glauden on the sweep. Swings it around towards the original line of scrimmage, cuts back and continues to move. How about the electric moves of Isaac Glauden? And he's got a first down. That's just a great cut. That's great determination. Give the offensive line some credit. They didn't give up on a play as well. So when he made that first and second cut by the sideline and he cut back, the offensive line was running downfield, aiding him. Watch right here. You see him break outside, miss tackle, and there's your cut. And then here we go. Here comes the cavalry. One, two. Here comes three. Here comes four. Got to like the fact that Holy Cross, they must work on their pursuit drills because offensively and defensively, they just keep attacking and coming at you. So the give on first down. Near side, Terrence Alexander. Trudging forward towards the sticks. And then I'll move the chains again after the pickup of 11. Good tackle by Randy Yu, number 13. Coming up from, looks like his corner spot. That's a great cut right here. And you see how he went down low. You go down low, you wrap up. Guys are going down. I don't care how big and strong you are. There's Randy Yu and Christian Colangelo in there. Colangelo, the junior from Whitestone. And so wearing number 49 in the backfield is Nick Woods. He'll line up in that fullback spot. Normally wears number 42. As the give to Alexander again on first down. And he picks up a pair before he's brought down by A.J. Brown, the sophomore. It's just a simple zone play. Woods comes across as a fullback, blocks the outside guy, but well defended by Prep. All right, second down and eight, the chains were wrong, corrected. Again, Prep right now needs to make a stop. You know, they got the wind, they got Prep, uh, Holy Cross going against the wind, so right now, you can get them to go three and out, even though they've gotten their first downs. You still have time in this quarter to get back into this game. Here's the give, Woods. Woods shakes a couple of tacklers, flag in the backfield as Woods gets pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Two flags on the play. Two flags on the play. 
So this should bring the Knights back. Yeah, it's a hold. And we can see the explosiveness of Woods. And of course, everyone looks a little bit extra um, explosive when there is a hold and you go down the field. But Tim Smith uh, speaking to his quarterback, Yandel Javier. Doesn't look happy there. No. As Javier back to back to the huddle, and older brother just graduated last year. Gavin, his family's from. The Rosedale Jets, super academic kids, was the number one tight end a year ago and now operating that QB position. Didn't technically get the start today, but he's beginning a starter's numbers of stats. As the blitz comes and incomplete towards Alexander, and probably better off that Alexander didn't make that catch. It read my mind on that. Setting up a screen, got tip, diving for the ball. If he catches it, it's a five yard loss. Instead, you go third and 15 versus third and 20. So good call on that, saying that, you know, good thing he didn't catch the ball. Big play right here, right now for prep on defense. They need something positive. They need to get off the field with their defense and get their offense back with some good field position. Third and 16 from the 34-yard line. And around, Glauden. Scoots past Melendez at the 30-yard line, sidesteps, and almost brought back to the original line of scrimmage. But not enough, and Holy Cross will send out the punting unit. And that's what Prep wanted. Prep needed to get the defense off the field. That was about a 40-yard run for a two-yard gain. You know, well played. He did a great job just getting back to the line of scrimmage and not taking a 20-yard loss. And so it'll be Williams to knock it away. Buchanan back to receive for the Terriers. And Holy Cross after scoring 14 points in the first quarter. Preps defense settling down. Takes a Knights bounce. And it'll be escorted to the 25-yard line. So a 37-yard punt as it's down by Ethan Magaly, the senior from Flushing and another converted quarterback. Doing a good job at safety, and Prep will take over when we come back on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share. And around to Troy Faison as Prep takes over at their own 25 yard line, bounces off a few tacklers and continues to power forward. Faison's been so elusive for the Terriers this year as he continues to move the chains for St. Francis Prep. Yeah, that's a nice run. I mean, there was nothing there. That was bottled up by the whole Holy Cross defense. I mean, they just really had him bottled up. He went in and out, in and out, in and out, and he picked up 10 for a first down. And so midway through the third quarter, Midway through the second quarter, excuse me. St. Francis Prep jumps. And another penalty against the Terriers. That's their fourth penalty, fourth time jumping. And that accumulates to, and there you're right, and five penalties in the game for now 35 yards. And again, it, that shift is giving them problems. Usually the shifts go the other way, but you know, you don't see five, four or five jump, you know, 
illegal procedures. You might see four or five offsides, not watching the ball, not you know what we call a sight key, looking at the man in front of you. But see, there's the shift, and it's really got them confused. Faison, Sashay's ahead, and a pickup of ten. And faison has been the lone positive on offense for St. Francis Prep so far this evening. Yeah, they found something here. Uh, getting outside, they ran a T backfield. Okay, just a fake dive and a toss. You see how quick he is. Good block by the wide receiver. If they stop shooting themselves in the foot, they can get themselves right back in this game. Faison averaging four and a half yards per carry, six for 26. Zulo rolling out. Slings it. He's got Melendez inbounds. That was so close to the line of scrimmage as Melendez able to haul it in and a first down for St. Francis Prep. Another great throw. He's definitely getting into a rhythm right now. Faison is getting a rhythm running. Zulo's getting in a rhythm as a court. Like right now, if you're Coach Carroll, you want to up this tempo a little bit. You've you got a real good rhythm right now. You're starting to see guys that are on their knees. You got a chance right here. Well, at the 43 yard line, Faison gives it off to Buchanan up the gut. Peyton Buchanan is leveled by Ethan Magaly, but not before he picks up eight. Yeah, right now, crosses on their heels. They don't know if they're going outside, they don't know if they're going inside. So, real good mixture of play calling by Coach Carroll. That was just an inside counter. We call it a counter crisscross. So right now, they're, they're running their trap game. They're running their angles. So they got things rolling right now. So you want to capitalize. You want to finish this drive off with points. Zulo slings it. He's got a man, but Melendez can't make the catch. Well, that's one that Melendez feels he should have caught. And it'll be second and short. Yeah, you got to help him out there. I mean, again, there's your bootleg, there's your play action. Great call on second and five. Does a real nice job setting his feet. Those are the plays that if you want to win games like this, especially rivalry games where you know people are all, you know, cranked up right now, you got a huge crowd below us right now, those are the plays you have to make. All right, so check that. So third and two, and Zulo. Get some protection, flicks it. Face on. Troy, face on inside the 30. Still on his feet, cuts back. And face on as the ball comes loose. And St. Francis Prep gets on top of it. Face on, able to net 16. The key to this play was the block by Frankie Valvo. Watch this block. Does a great job right here. He doesn't crack back a defenseless player, but right there, that sets him off for another 15, 20 yards. And that was a fumble, but it was recovered by Sebastian Cordelaro. Zulo, the pitch to Buchanan. Buchanan in second gear, bottled up, and brought down. Christian Gonzalez in there with the stop. Hard to see, but I'm sure Toppin was in there again. Toppin's been everywhere today, wearing number 55 in white. He does a nice job controlling the middle of that defense. Him and Woods. But give the D tackles a lot of credit. They do a real good job. Zulo, quick hitter. He's got Cordarolo. And Sebastian Cordarolo with his first catch of the evening. Pushed out at the 11. Zulo now four of eight passing after missing his first three passing attempts at the ball game. Yeah, he's got a rhythm going right now, and you got third down and four. I'm sure Coach Carroll right now is saying two down situation. There's no way he's going to settle for a field goal down 14. I would expect either if he's going to throw the ball, it's going to be a waggle, that boot pass, or possibly that little inside guard trap. 
Buchanan sweeps far side. Short. And so that'll bring up fourth and short. And you're right, and down 14, St. Francis Prep probably going to go for it. They have their shorthanded kicker, Petros Hazemahalis, but either way, um, down two scores. Prep wants to get in this. And coming up at the half, we've got our bagel parlor food review. Ton of nights and terriers have frequented there. And the Varsity Media top ten plays of the week. First half highlights and more all coming up at the half right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Fourth and one from the nine-yard line. And a whistle beforehand and a timeout taken by St. Francis Prep. Going for it for the first time today on fourth down. And Carroll talk it over and check that. I guess a timeout by Holy Cross. So they saw how St. Francis Prep was going to line up. And either way, when you take a timeout there, uh, what's – the thinking for Tim Smith there? Well, the first thing he's probably telling his D-line is watch the ball. Let's not jump off sides, all right? You know, we, like I tell my D-line, don't watch the ball. Because now if you're looking in, I don't care if you're using pro provision. If you're looking in, he's going to get that step. So I like to sit there and tell my guys, you read the man in front. We call it a side key, all right? When he moves, that's when you move. And I think that's what's happening on the reverse side of the ball with St. Francis Prep. They're looking at... Holy Cross every time, every time they shift, they've jumped. So right now, Coach Smith probably said, first thing, watch the ball or watch the man in front of you, clog up the inside gaps, and, and let's make a play. He could be sending his two middle backers. He could be playing zero or cover one. You know, prep has found a little bit with Faison going outside. So would it surprise me if they run some kind of a Buck sweep or jet sweep, it would not surprise me. Oh, look, if there's Valvo. He's got the first down. Angles towards the end zone. He's short. But that'll move the chain. Set up first and goal from the one for the Terriers. Yeah, ran a nice little cross block here off tackle where they had them spread out. Yeah, they just sealed down and isoed the backer. Real nice play. Prep going quickly. You've got Corderola lined up on the right side. Valvo right behind Zulo. There's a handoff and a flag again. And as the Terriers jump again for their sixth penalty of the ball game. No, it looks like they're actually going to call offsides on cross. I'm getting confused because... The side judge said offsides and pointed prep. The referee went offsides and pointed cross. Coach Carroll seems to be confused, as does Coach Smith. Yeah, so now Carroll get the explanation. So what I'm assuming is somebody lined up offsides because there was no movement awesome. and it wasn't an illegal motion. Now, now the call is illegal motion, but he, he pointed the wrong way. I understand the frustration and yeah, but either way it, it goes against St. Francis prep. So yeah, they're not at the one yard line, but you could spread it out now. You could, throw a pass there are certain options for St. Francis Prep with two and a half to go in the first half Buchanan he'll dump it over phase on jump ball tipped caught touchdown Sebastian Corderolo off a tip by phase on running a little toss pass Here it comes, right here. Running a jet sweep. Little toss. Buchanan throws the ball up in the air. Look at all the people right there. Magali thought he had it, and Corderolo was there. And Sebastian scores his fifth touchdown of the season. It and looks like they're going to go for two here. Yep. I like this call.
Now you get a timeout by Coach Carroll. Not a bad call as well. So right now, for whatever reason, they're down eight. Going to go for two. Playing the analytics. Well, let's check that touchdown again. And this could be one of Varsity Media's top ten plays of the week. Corderola, right place, right time. As he was battling with Ethan Magaly. Or Faison was battling with Ethan Magaly. And with that said, Varsity Media is the home for the New York CHSFL Championships. And we'll be streaming all championships during the football season this fall. So be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube, X, Facebook, and Instagram. Prep and Holy Cross with aspirations to play in one of those games. And they always look at this game as a championship game as well. And Carroll says that whenever he goes back to his high school reunions or attends the yearly high school reunion, it's always, what year did you graduate? Did you beat Cross? Zulo rolling out, skips, and brought down. So the two-point conversion, no good. As the Knights' defense stands tall. And he took a shot there. And he comes up limping right now. That's not a good sign. He took a shot in the back, even though he's limping. And, yeah, that's tough to, uh, tough to see for Zulo, who is now down on the sideline. And Carroll looking over at him. And there's Zulo, yeah, shaking up. You see him by the head trainer and trying to see if he got the wind knocked out of him. Or if he got his bell rung a little bit. But that that was a big touchdown. That's a that's a big score right now because if you can hold cross right here, you get the mm -hmm. ball to start the second half. There's Tommy Zulo, his stats coming into the season and just what he means for St. Francis Prep. Seems very frustrated. Now you have a, a flag here. This will either be a sideline warning or a unsportsmanlike. I'm going to say it's a sideline warning on one of their assistant coaches. And so you see the wind. St. Francis Prep will have to hold it down as Vinny Costanza, the junior, to hold it for the Terriers. So St. Francis Prep strikes back, trailing 14-6. And Amadio with the squib kick. And Terrence Alexander starts it from the 20-yard line. Dashes forward and wrestled down. Good tackle by George Proponis, the senior. And so now 2.12 to go in the first half. And Holy Cross with a 14-6 lead. And trying to get a semblance of offense and put more points on the board going into the half. It'll be interesting to see how Coach Smith plays this. He's got great field position. I know it's a tough win. They can run the ball. So he. I don't think he's going to sit on the ball and look to go into halftime up just eight. If you prep, you're going to come after him right now. Man in motion is Glauden. The give to Alexander. Sweeps far side. Flag is down. And Alexander... Gets the pickup of nine, but we'll see what the flag is. It's going to be a hold. Because right at the point of attack, I mean, you saw Coach Smith really be upset with the official on that call. And before that carry, Alexander was averaging eight yards a pop. Four rushes for 32 yards. and He's just been that explosive back for the night so far today. Now he's got another gear. I mean, he gets a little space. He makes that one cut, and he's gone. Now, does this change your thinking for Coach Smith, where you say, 
eight, we're going to try to score. Now you get backed up into your 25-yard line, knowing that Cross has a timeout or two. Does this say, hey, let's get into halftime up eight? Make them use their timeouts, punt the ball, and, and start the second half fresh? Or do you still try to score? Here's Alexander. Nowhere to go as the Terriers rally over. Gregoriano had the first touch. Timeout. And a timeout taken by St. Francis Prep. To talk it over, and you're right, maybe he wants to try and salvage as much clock as he can. Remember, Holy Cross will get the ball to start the second half. And so St. Francis Prep trailing by eight. And Holy Cross trying to keep momentum going. It'll be second and long. See, and if you're Holy Cross right now, knowing you're getting the ball, you kind of want to get into halftime up eight. Yeah. You don't want to give up points now. Now, the timeout that Coach Carroll called for that two-point play could be the one that doesn't allow him to get the ball back in his half. You know, with three timeouts, he's getting the ball back with un over a minute to go. Now, I think he has one more timeout left. He's not going to get the ball back with a, a minute left. He's going to get the ball back with maybe 30 seconds, 20 seconds left. Second and long. Alexander again. Sweeps it. Check that. That's Glauden. And Glauden pushed out of bounds. Going out of bounds, or getting knocked out of bounds is a huge thing right now, though, because now Prep doesn't need that timeout. Yeah. The clock stops because it's out of bounds. So now they are able to save a timeout. So you're looking at third and 11 right now. If you stop them here, you know Coach Carroll calls a timeout. Maybe you get a short punt. Maybe you get up that Hail Mary, that double tip, off, tip again, and see what happens. There's Tim Smith. His eighth season from Tilden High School, class of 1982. And so 80 seconds to go in the first half. Holy Cross trying to keep the chains moving. Antoine Williams. Give off Glauden. And Glauden. Branches forward. And Carroll takes another timeout. A.J. Brown, Brown with the tackle. And so Holy Cross should be sending out the punting unit and for St. Francis Prep, an opportunity to go into the locker room tied or at least a few points down as we have this break. We implore you to take out your phone, scan the QR code, and follow Varsity Media on social media on X, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook by scanning above right now. I know there's been a lot of talk on the social media um, handle this week on Varsity Media because it's been rivalry week. We had your game, Aspequa Farmingdale, St. Francis Prep, as well as Holy Cross, and perhaps a new rivalry, at least for this year, Plain Edge and Southside. It's been a fun week. We're in you want to see those rivals potentially match up again, be sure to subscribe on the social media platforms. And that's a great bounce back win for Coach Shaver and the Plain Edge Red Devils after losing their quarterback, losing a tough game, to come back and get a nice win like that, you know, puts him right back where he wants to be, That looking at a one, two, or three seed. Jack Rizzo, game winning, pick six. Good punt by Williams, and it will go out of bounds. At the 35-yard line. So a 31-yard punt. And Tommy Zullo back in action for the Terriers. Well, let's see how Zullo's moving. Again, not sure if it was his head or if he took a shot to the ribs and he just got the wind knocked out of him. He seems to be jogging no problem, so I don't think it was his ankle or his knee. So he's found a rhythm. Faison has found a rhythm. Holy Cross. Has to come up with a play right here. Play 
Playing four deep right now. And we saw some movement and another false start. Again, St. Francis prep. It's now their seventh penalty, accumulating 45 yards. Six false starts. Yeah, you're going to see a false start here and there with a young team, and we, we know that prep is young. A lot of sophomores, a lot of juniors. But that that's a lot, especially in a half. So I don't know what's going on. If, if it's the snap count or if they're really just getting that confused every time Holy Cross shifts. So first and 15, phase on, in motion. Zula back to pass. Tipped up in the air and incomplete. As the pressure was coming. Good job by the Holy Cross front line as Kyle Toppin in there as well. Great job uh, defending the screen on this. The whole D-line right here, number 78, puts his hands up, okay, and does a great job. Hester, ninth grade, don't have a height and weight for him, but looks about 6'2", 6'3". Doesn't look like a freshman. No, definitely does not, and he's not playing like a freshman. No, Sincere Hester just called up this week. And that's a big reason why he's been on the varsity roster. Quarterolo in the flat, picks it up, and then scoots out of bounds. That stops the clock with 50 seconds to go in the first half. Holy Cross is playing a real soft zone. They could, they could dink and dunk all, all the way down the field in 50 seconds, no problem. Take what they're going to give you. They're playing four deep. Almost 15 yards. You have your linebackers at eight or nine yards. Just keep running short outs to the sideline, and they'll be able to get first downs. Inside draw here. Yeah, Valvo towards midfield. Gets across into Knights territory, but not able to get out of bounds. Clock stops, though, on a first down. As the Terriers have to rally to the football. And Zulo clocks it. See, that's the only negative when you get an offense like this is that you don't have the ability to call a play from the line of scrimmage. You can have out the job of Valvo and what he's been able to do. Tough as nails. He was the backup linebacker, so he's not afraid to hit or, get, or lay out the hits. And as he picks up the first down for St. Francis Prep. Terriers with seven first downs in the first half. Azulo returns back to the huddle. It should be second down. You're right. Should Sticks be second and one. ten. Yeah. Should be second and ten. Stick safe first. So Azulo rolling out, slings it. He's got Buchanan, and Buchanan spun out of bounds. As Terrence Alexander meets him at the sideline. And cool. Carroll is really upset, saying that should have been a late hit or something there. Yeah, it was close. He's really upset. You could see him arguing. You don't want to take a penalty here. And they fix the sticks right now. So we're looking at third down and... A long three. Again, they have the flats wide open because of how soft the secondary is playing right now. Pitch back. Phase on to Zulo. Zulo, he's got a first down and a seam as he angles out of bounds. And a big pickup for Zulo inside the 30-yard line after the... 21-yard run. And he was looking to throw the ball deep on that. Good play by the corners that were playing very deep and not coming up on the pass. All right, he flips it over here. Look, he was looking to throw the ball right there. And 
So that was Faison as he chipped it over to Zulo. 24.8 seconds to go first half. Good hustle by Hester again, making sure that he didn't get any more. Zulo steps up, slings it. He's got a man, Valvo. Again, I'm going to say this. Holy Cross's secondary is playing very soft. They're defending the end zone right now. They're not defending the, the sticks. They're not defending the flats right now. So they're just going down the field, dink and dunk, dink and dunk. At some point, they're going to throw the ball to the end zone. But they've now given themselves at least a shot of tying this game up or at least going into halftime down 2 or 1. So now 7 of 12 for 72 yards. Looking to pass again on second down. Incomplete to Buchanan as he underthrew his steady-handed receiver. Yeah, he's got to throw it out a little bit sooner so that he can catch the ball and get out of bounds. I think he was looking for something a little bit deeper, and that was his check down. But, again, when you wait that long, you're still chewing up clock. Even though the clock stops on the incomplete, you still wasted five seconds. So now you're down to 14.7 seconds, third down and five. At some point, you're going to have to take a shot to the end zone. Unless he's looking to set up a field goal, then he's going to be looking to throw a short little out right here, stop the clock, take one shot to the end zone, or possibly kick a field goal. Well, you're looking at a 41-yard field goal right now. Third down and four from the 24. Zulo steps up. And rifles a pass over, and he's got another man. That's Faison. And brought down out of bounds, but that'll set up first and goal. Now, he did a great job on this. He could have ran the ball, but he knows if he runs the ball and gets tackled in bounds, that the clock is going to continue to roll. So he sat right before the first down or right before the sticks, the line of scrimmage. Watch, right here. He knows. He's going, he's going, he's not. Interesting call right here. You have seven seconds. If you get tackled anywhere in play, half is over. So this ball has to go to the end zone. Seven seconds left, first half. Prep looking for the equalizer. A little in-out route. Roll out, Zulo. Zulo directing, takes it himself. End zone, touchdown! Tommy Zulo calling his own number from nine yards out. Scores the TD. And St. Francis Prep has come back as they trail by two. He is taking over this game. Now, before the game started, we we're talking about the win. Both teams have scored two touchdowns with the wind at their back. So, in essence, this is becoming a two-quarter game when you have the ball with the win versus when you don't have the win. But I go back to saying that Holy Cross's defense, they were playing way too soft. They let him just run the outs, use the sideline. With no timeouts, they went, how many yards? Over 60 yards with no timeouts. This will be the last play of the half. It'll be a two-point conversion. But we'll wait momentarily as Holy Cross Holy calls Cross. a timeout and to set up. So if you're Holy Cross, what are you expecting here? And what's Tim Smith telling his team? you got two players that are hurting us right now. All right? You, we need to lock up one of them and spy the other. You know, Buchanan also could make a play right now, but between Faison and Zulo, you have to, you have to know that the ball is going to be in one of their hands, whether it's a run or a pass. Coming up at the half, we'll have our Bagel Parlor food review. Can't wait for that one. Varsity Media top ten plays of the week, first half highlights, and more. It's all coming up at the half on the Varsity Media Sports Network. This has been a fun battle of the boulevard on Charles Lindbergh Boulevard. As near packed house right underneath us here in the press box and Holy Cross making their way here as well as a contingent on the opposite side here at Mitchell Field Complex. You know, 20 minutes ago, if you would have told me this would be a, a, a great game, I would have said, you're nuts. It's 14 nothing, and Holy Cross had the ball after the interception and ready to score again. Now, you're at 14-12 and going for two. So we could either go in tied at half or a two-point deficit. Love rivalry. Terriers looking for the tie. 
Zulo, the roll out again. Spins back of the end zone, tipped up, and it's intercepted. And the two-point conversion incomplete, intended for Julian Melendez, but a good play on the far side by the secondary for Holy Cross. We'll take another look. I uh, thought we were going to get another one of those tip balls. Up, oh, touchdown, up, oh, two-point play, but nope. And so Chris Bream with a big play for Holy Cross. That sends us to the half, 14-12 the lead for Holy Cross. Halftime here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. This is Solomon Thomas with the New York Jets, and you're watching Varsity Media. Masmuth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Masmuth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. A youth flag football college experience like no other, an environment where everything is earned. Register your boys and or girls team for the spring 2024 season today. Locations include Massapequa, St. Anthony's High School, East Meadow, and more to follow. Third and 10 flag football powered by youthflagfootball.com. Tearing through my heart, need to paint a picture Praying that my faith won't let me down Cutting through my soul, there's a world wide open Look up at the stars, trying to find my moment Push it till I break High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. High school sports fans, Varsity Media is the exclusive live stream media partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of soccer, volleyball, field hockey, and football, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Halftime here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. It's the Battle of the Boulevard as Holy Cross with a 14-12 lead over St. Francis Prep. It is time for our Bagel Parlor food review. And Mike, I can't wait for this one. Bagel Parlor located right there in Whitestone, so not too far from either one of these schools. And of course, owned by St. Francis Prep, DC, Jerry Natale, who has just given us a fantastic spread. We're gonna sample the food here. So we've got a ton of food here in the box and we'll show it off in a second as uh, we come back on, but there's the address. So I'm lucky I've got the chicken cutlet sandwich here, and then looks like you got a little roasted pepper mozzarella. Roasted pepper mozzarella, little uh, 
little balsamic. All right. Outstanding. Uh, I knew I wanted this job for some reason. It's, it's always the best when we get fed, and Bagel Parlor is a place for you. And it's not just bagels. They do things the right way, serving tradition. There is the Danish as well. I don't want it to go in the scoreboard. There we go. So we're good right there. And then here's my favorite. Piece de resistance. Uh, the dessert, apple turnover as well. So Bagel Parlor. So now it's time to dig in and give a score. So I'm going to move this up a little bit so you don't hear me chew. That's good. I have to tell you, that's very good. Very good. Mozzarella is fresh, and the focaccia bread is made daily every day. So it's not day-old bread or anything like that. Bagel parlor. You could go there for breakfast, for lunch, serving great coffee as well. Danishes, uh, Lumberoli as well. It is a great job here by Jerry Natali, and can't wait to see. So if you're at Holy Cross or St. Francis Prep, be sure to go to Bagel Parlor and Whitestone. We'll step aside. I'm going to chew this so I don't want to choke for the second half. We've got a good one here. Holy Cross and St. Francis Prep on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. Net. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. High school sports fans, Varsity Media is the exclusive live stream media partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of soccer, volleyball, field hockey, and football, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life? And now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. A youth flag football college experience like no other. An environment where everything is earned. Register your boys and or girls team for the spring 2024 season today. Locations include Massapequa, St. Anthony's High School, East Meadow, and more to follow. Third and 10 flag football powered by youthflagfootball.com. Tearing through my heart, need to paint a picture. Praying that my faith won't let me down. 
You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. High school sports fans, Varsity Media is the exclusive live stream media partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of soccer, volleyball, field hockey, and football, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life? and now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. A youth flag football college experience like no other. An environment where everything is earned. Register your boys and or girls team for the spring 2024 season today. Locations include Massapequa, St. Anthony's High School, East Meadow, and more to follow. Third and 10 flag football powered by youthflagfootball.com. Tearing through my heart, need to paint a picture, praying that my faith won't let me down. Back here on the Varsity Media Sports Network, Holy Cross with a 14-12 lead over St. Francis Prep. And for Mike Spina, I'm John Perez and the rest of our crew. And Mike, it's been a fun rivalry game so far as Holy Cross went out to a 14-0 lead and St. Francis Prep able to storm back with a pair of touchdowns, but not able to get those two-point conversions. But either way, it's anybody's game with one half remaining. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you could have thought this game was over in the first quarter, but, you know, we talked about the, the weather, we talked about the wind, and both teams have taken advantage 
of the win when they've had it at their back. You know, St. Francis, think about it. If you take away that bad snap on the first possession on the punt and given uh, Holy Cross a one-yard, you know, one-yard touchdown run, they're actually up where they look like they were being dominated. But, you know, give it to uh, Coach Carroll and his staff and his, his team. They came back, did a great job. Uh, Faison and Zulo, man, they really have taken over this game. And so for Holy Cross, they come into this game looking for their fourth win of the year. Uh, trying to be at 500, would be 4-4 four and four overall, and then 3-3 three and three in the AA2 league standings and keeping pace with the Zavarian. And Holy Cross we saw in the first half, and I think that that was a first half that was very aided by the wind in the gust, and we noticed in the right side end zone or the south end zone, um, that's where all the points were scored. And for Holy Cross, uh, they did a good job defending and a very good ground and pound team as well. Yes, they did. They they started off pounding the ball, and you're right. Everything has been in the southwest end zone. Nothing has been to our left, you know, in the north. So I'm kind of curious to see right now with, with prep kicking off, you have the choice right now, all right? You're going to kick off. What way do you – do you want the wind in the third quarter or do you want it in the fourth quarter? And it looks like Coach Carroll is going to kick off taking the win now in the third quarter – seeing if he could get the lead here going into the fourth quarter and then use his running game uh, to control the clock in the fourth quarter because that's what you have to do. When you're going against the win like this, you have to be able to run the ball. Holy Cross only passed the ball four times, and they didn't complete a pass in the first half. As Either way, you're right. It's been a ground-and-pound team for Holy Cross, and St. Francis Prep getting a semblance of offense. Zulo in the first half, 8 for 14 for 85 yards and an interception. And also the touchdown. Now it looks like Coley Cross is playing for possibly an onside kick, or they're just not confident that the ball is going to be kicked too deep. Well, the last time that Nick Amadio kicked it, it didn't have the distance. So Glauden lines up at the 25-yard line and scouts it out and picked up with momentum. It's Randy Zoles. And Zoles, little spinorama and spins again. And so goes... What's that, uh, seven, 720 degrees, 720. right? <laughs> he went a couple of times. He went spin one, spin two, did a good job. You know, that's tough, catching the ball going away, not knowing where the uh, kickoff team's coming from. You know, good field position. Zoll's a two-sport athlete, has good hands, and also plays on the basketball team as well. And so Holy Cross will go back out there on offense and try and create some momentum and punch back against St. Francis Prep and go down towards the windy side of the field. As Yandiel Javier back under center for the Knights. Give on first down, this is Terrence Alexander. Alexander has a first down and gets brought down. Alexander, five carries for 35 yards in the first half after the pickup of 12. I think you're going to see the ball in his hands a little bit more. He's got a real nice jump cut ability. He's got good speed. This is the quarter that you're going to want to run the ball. You want to tell your running backs, if you can, stay in bounds. You want the clock to move. So you, they went right back to their bread and butter. You know, eye formation, tight end set, we call it a pro, and, and just running straight at them, north and south. You see Woods as a sniffer right now, slash fullback. Same play they ran before, just a zone read. But again, that's they're going more east-west there. They're having more success going straight at them, north and south, than east and west. Greg Oriano brought down in the backfield, loss of five. And we've seen at times, too, this defense step up for St. Francis Prep. They're led by Christopher Felly, who Natali, the owner of Bagel Parlor and defensive coordinator, says uh, whenever he has any hesitation, as long as he's got Felly on his side, he'll be okay. And Felly's been an anchor to the defense today for St. Francis Prep. And... He leads the way with three tackles for that Terriers defense. 
Feli. Just sounds like something that should be in between that focaccia bread with some yeah. balsamic and fresh mozzarella. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have some Feli on my sandwich. <laughs> Nick Woods. His ground just forward. And the gain of four for Nick Woods, who tore his ACL a year ago, and at one point there was a question whether he was going to play or not, and he's playing like a brand-new player. Second game of the year last year is when he tore his ACL, the three-year varsity starter. But his rehab went really well, wearing number 49 in white today. He normally wears number 42. But how about this? You tear your ACL, and then before you know it, Months later, he's squatting two to 300 pounds as if it was nothing. Modern technology. I mean, you're seeing people come back from ACLs in five, six months where it used to be minimum of a year. Yeah. I know for you, 300 pounds is light work, right? Yeah, okay. I didn't think we were talking about my body weight. Throw down to the <laughs> far side. Glauden makes the grab. Nice pass by Javier and the hook up to Glauden. And the first complete pass of the ball game for the Knights as they set up in Terrier's territory. That's a big play right there. Third down. He takes a hit from behind. A little back shoulder. That's a huge play right there to keep the move the sticks, keep this clock going. I know the ball went out of bounds, so the clock stops on that. But the clock's going to keep going right now. You get another possession, another three or four downs. And a lot of movement up front and offside against St. Francis Prep. Terriers now with eight penalties in this contest. That's just, that comes down to discipline. You know, I talk to my D-line every single practice about discipline, sight keys, and every time they jump off sides at the end of practice, we have to do a gasser. And for us, we do what a, we call a full gas. So that's 53 yards back and forth twice. And if they question it, it's two. There you go. So that's, and it, and that's it, the answer to the question. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the slip, Javier. And of course, in high school, when you go down, that's it, especially the quarterback. So Javier blows a tire. And a loss of eight on the play. Yeah, he was looking to go deep on a, looked like a post corner route. Well covered though, so big play here. You got him second and long again. You want to get off the field here defensively. Let your offense get the ball with the win with some time on the clock. And so Holy Cross. You now dealing second and long, second and 13, under eight minutes to play in the third quarter. A pair of receivers on both sides in the give, and it's Woods. Ranging wide, shakes a couple of tacklers, gets past Felly, and towards the sticks. And a flag is down, and it should be a hold in the backfield. Yeah, right at the point of attack, as soon as he planted his foot and cut up, they called the hold. I really would like to see the replay on this to see if, if it was a hold or not. Well, either way, the officials say it is a it is a hold, and then it'll push back 10 yards. And so Holy Cross not really helping themselves either. They haven't committed as many penalties as St. Francis Prep, but still four for 35 yards. That's a big one right there. You, you, you get yourself into positive territory. You have a chance to score against the win, change the whole momentum of this game. You jump off sides. You, you have a turnover possibly now because you're going to throw the ball, which you really don't want to do. You know, everything's up in the air right now. You can see the wind blowing on the field. You see... Things blowing from the north end zone going to the south. So, again, it's tough to throw the ball. Quick hitter, Glauden. That's complete. Gets past his first tackler. Trudges ahead. Ball on the carpet. And St. Francis Prep has it on the turnover. 
Wind or no wind, Holy Cross didn't take care of it. Buchanan falls on top of it, and the Terriers have possession. I hate saying that. I just said now with these penalties, you can almost feel like a turnover is coming, you know. And you feel bad for Gordy. This, you know, he makes a, breaks the tackles, running hard. They just don't give up. Neither one of these teams give up on plays. You know, they the ball's passed, the defensive line's going downfield. The offensive line's going downfield when a running back breaks the line of scrimmage. You like to see that. Yep. You, how often do you see these big-time players, if the play's not run at them, they're just not moving. They, they take plays off. And it looks like George Propanis poked it free. And so now Tommy Zullo back out in the gun. And the give, it's Buchanan. Just picked up the fumble and moves the pile forward. That's all second effort there. Well, what can you say about Buchanan, what he's been able to do? And this, is the, this is his first year coming out of the backfield. Played some wide receiver, uh, mostly on defense last year, and someone who's good at picking up the blocks. But because of his athletic ability, he's been given the ball more and more, and he's rewarded St. Francis Prep this year on offense. Zulo, the rollout. Still on his feet, chugs forward, and wrestled down. Terrence Alexander with the pin down. After Zulo with the pickup of should be nine and good enough for the first down. Again, Zulo's looking deep, and he's given his receivers a chance to make their move, whether it's a double move or not, but he's waiting to see if they're going to be open. They're covered but he's still giving them that opportunity. But while that's happening, he's also looking at the defensive zone that they're playing, and he knows, is he going to break outside? Is he going to break inside? And he's doing a great job with his legs right now, and it started in the second quarter where he found his legs. He found a little bit of a rhythm, and his scrambling ability has definitely changed this game. Sweep, phase on. Shakes off the first hit from Woods and brought down by Servito. Yeah, Woods came too high on that, and he bounced right off him. What should have been a two-yard loss ends up to be a three-yard gain. Servito, wearing number 72 on the screen, offers from Wagner, Fordham, as well as St. Anselm. Good run defender, and Servito, a junior from Flushing. And a big part for this Holy Cross defense. He's got some nice offers, good size, good speed. Does a great job using his hands on his takeoffs. Tried to run that shift again. Zulo airs it out down the field as nobody. And a disconnect between he and Faison. As the only man in coverage was Ethan Magaly. And that'll be third and six. See, now Cross did a great job not letting him scramble. Nobody was open, looking for that lane where he could scramble, and they took it away from him that time. So he did the smart thing. He threw the ball away. It's an overthrow. What looks like, oh, my God, he missed a receiver, really is not. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very, very smart play. Zulo 8 of 15 for 85 yards. And that interception. Twirls it near side. He's got Melendez. Julian Melendez is good enough for the first down. And the pickup of nine on the hookup. And went right back to what they did on the last drive and a half. Working the short outs, the short flats, the hitches. The way Holy Cross is playing their defense, they can just dink and dunk all day on that. There is that weak spot in the zone that they're running, and it is just running hitches and outs, hitches and outs. Second catch for Melendez. He's got 26 yards. Low snap. Zulo on first down. Steps up. Now pounces back. Directs traffic. He'll call his own number again. Inside the 25 and brought down. Big hit and a flag. And that'll go against Nick Woods. As Zulo was giving himself up, Woods laid the lumber. This will be a big penalty against Holy Cross. Let's, let's hope this is not a targeting. Because if it's a targeting, that could be an ejection. 
Well, and that's what the call looks to be. And you see Woods, like, with his hands up saying, I didn't mean to hit him, like, in his head. He was coming at me, and I'm going to make a tackle, and then he slid. And at that point, you know, it's hard to stop your momentum. Calling personal foul. He's given him the targeting sign. Well, Woods was the guy that hit him, number 49 in white. Trying to find him on the field. Yeah, he's there. He's back in his metal spot. So no ejection on Woods, but either way, Zulo gives off to Faison. First and 10 from the 13, and a pickup for Faison again. Let's take another look at that last play. Great escape ability right there. And again, he's directing receivers. Now you get a good downfield block. I, I don't know. I, I, that's not targeting. You know, he's going down kind of feet first. He looks like he's giving himself up, but it's hard to stop your momentum. He didn't lower his head. You know, you're torn On the second tackle and eight, low. here come the Terriers. Zulo throws a dart incomplete. I'm sorry, finish your thought there. So he's not... He, he, you know, you're going to tackle, and you're tackling low. You're going low. So when as he's sliding and Woods is coming low, there's contact by the shoulders and close to the head. I didn't... Again, I didn't see helmet to helmet. I didn't see shoulder pad down. Yeah, did I see shoulder pad to the to the top of his shoulders? Yeah, but that's what happens when he slides. I, I don't think it was a malicious hit. I don't think he had any intentions of it even being a late hit. I, I, I think that's a tough call. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Don't get me wrong. On third and eight, Zulo spins out of the pocket. And that is devoured. Nick Servito with the takedown. As Servito picks up his first sack of the ball game and second TFL. And that pins Zulo and the rest of the offense back by their ears. And it looks like Shaw does a good job boxing him in, and then there's that pursuit. You know, we talked about how Holy Cross was getting 11 hats to the ball. Well, they got about seven or eight on that. Now, interesting call here. All right, fourth and double sticks. Looks like it's going to be about a 37, 38-yard field goal. Look like they're coming to block it. Petros had some Mahalis with the kick, and it's way short. And so the kick is no good. And St. Francis Prep comes up empty with two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Well, high school rule, the ball goes to the 20. Yeah, it's not like it's going back to the spot. And so now Holy Cross takes over. The buck 55 on the clock. Interesting, though, because you know you have a field goal kicker. So could you have just kicked extra points and had this game tied at 14 instead of going for two and two? Interesting yeah. call. Glodden on first down. Swings far side. And scoots ahead for another pickup of seven. Yeah, they've had a lot of success with that jet sweep. And I, I love right now what Coach Smith and his offense coordinator just did. The last play that Cross had was a Glodden fumble. So who do you go back to first play? Yep, went right back to Glodden. Right back to him. Give, him. give him confidence. Go right back to him. Tell him, listen, you're one of our key players. That's what a good coach does. Off his offense coordinator, him, whoever made that call, good job. And Smith knows how great he is. He said that Glodden is one of the top players in the CHSFL. Nowhere to go for Alexander. Or check that Woods. And so Woods brought down. For three on the play. Up 
And interesting play call right now. You got third and five. You could run the ball. If you don't get it, you could probably run the clock out and punt with the wind. Or for St. Francis Prep to call a timeout. Or you could throw the ball and try to get a first down, knowing that if you're incomplete, it's, you're still going to punt against the wind. So interesting call. A little cat and mouse right now. The Knights race to the line. Glauden goes in motion. Here's the give. Alexander up the gut, brought down by A.J. Brown. And just what I said, they ran the ball, and they forced Holy Cross, I mean forced St. Francis Prep, to call a timeout. And that's what Coach Carroll did. He's going to use a timeout, which hopefully he doesn't need in the fourth quarter, but he's going to force him to punt the ball with 21 seconds to go against the win. Take a quick break here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Best breakfast or lunch in town? Look no further than Bagel Parlor in Whitestone. Offering hand-rolled kettle boiled bagels baked throughout the day with hot and made-to-order egg sandwiches, omelets, and wraps, Bagel Parlor is more than just bagels. Offering a complete line of Boar's Head cold cuts, homemade chicken cutlets, and signature sandwiches. Not to mention the baked danishes, bomboloni, and pastries. Last but not least, a full catering menu that includes your Italian favorites. Bagel Parlor, respect the tradition. Back here on the Varsity Media Sports Network, it's the Battle of the Boulevard as Holy Cross leads St. Francis. 14 to 12 with 21 seconds remaining in the third quarter. As Holy Cross back to punt. Curious on the snap. He almost centered the ball over his head before. Oh, that went high again. And the kick gets off. Good athletic play. And this should get to around midfield. And Holy Cross downs it at the 49-yard line. So a pickup of 24. Well, we mentioned the Battle of the Boulevard. Let's take a look at the last five meetings here as St. Francis Prep has won four of the last five. Holy Cross looking for their first victory since September 11th, 2021. And, you know, in these rivalry games, anything can happen. You've got that, uh, you get the barn burner in 2018, 21, 22, and then, of course, the 7-6 game in 2019. Again, all close games, no blowouts. You know, it's just... It's bragging rights. You know, who's going to walk on the left side of the street and have their chest out high? On first down, ball comes loose, and St. Francis preps on top of it. That was Melendez as the ball squirted free, and A.J. Brown on top of it again. We've said his name a few times on defense and offensively coming up big for the Terriers as time will expire in the third quarter. We head to the fourth in the Battle of the Boulevard. Holy Cross with a 14-12 lead on the Varsity Media Sports Network. The best breakfast or lunch in town? Look no further than Bagel Parlor in Whitestone. Offering hand-rolled kettle boiled bagels baked throughout the day, with hot and made-to-order egg sandwiches, omelets, and wraps, Bagel Parlor is more than just bagels. Offering a complete line of Boar's Head cold cuts, homemade chicken cutlets, and signature sandwiches. Not to mention the baked danishes, bomboloni, and pastries. Last but not least, a full catering menu that includes your Italian favorites. Bagel Parlor, respect the tradition. Back here on the Varsity Media Sports Network, we head to the fourth quarter and a 14-12 lead for Holy Cross as St. Francis Prep now back on offense. We call this holding serve, you know, whether it's tennis, ping pong, whatever. You hold yep. serve. That's what Cross did going against the win. They held serve. So here's your drive right now. And so on second down, the first down's picked up, and that was Frankie Valvo again. Yeah, he's, he's just taking over this game. Valvo, you know, started off slow. He didn't start off doing anything that important or that exciting. But all of a sudden, 
Something changed, something turned. Falvo, eight carries for 52 yards. First and 10 from the 37 for the Terriers. And the juggle forward, Valvo once more. And Valvo just continues to get the lion's share of the carries here in the second half. Well, remember this. Sticks are 10 yards apart, right? You go four times three, that's 12. You're moving the sticks every three plays. So if they can average four yards a pop, that's, what the, that's a good thing. You're looking at 6.6 6 yards per carry for Valvo this, after, this evening. Keep feeding them. Two down situation here, two downs. Up ahead, phase on, and a pickup of one. Again, Holy Cross tried that shift again with the defensive front. Now they didn't jump this time, but not jumping doesn't mean that they weren't confused on who to block. Wing T is all about angles and gaps. That's what the wing T is supposed to do. It's supposed to give you an angle to block. So every time that they go from one shade to another, those angles are changing. So the person responsible for blocking them, it could change. Third and four, the give again. No good. That's going to be short. Yeah, Valvo upended again. And so now fourth and short. We just saw Carroll go for it, uh, excuse me, go for the field goal on fourth down. You have to imagine this is four down territory as he brings in Zulo. And you know it didn't get as much forward progress as Valvo and the rest of the offense thought so. So you're looking at fourth and a long two. You might have to go outside because they're loading the box. They're loading the A gap and the B gap. You might have to run some kind of jet sweep outside. Zulo, blitz coming. Zulo's denied. Turnover on downs, big time stop, Ethan Magaly. Great play, great defensive call on the stunt. They know who's getting the ball, all right? They're, they're starting to gear it up right now, all right? It's either going to be Faison or Zulo. And you see the hands up. I don't know if he pulled that on his own, if he was supposed to give it to Faison on that. Because Faison turned right away, put his palms up. It was like, wait a minute, wasn't I supposed to get the ball? But, again, I'm not going to sit there and blame Zula. I, that's just a great defensive call. They hit their gaps. They ran a stun, all right, and they caused the havoc right away. There was nothing there. Terrence Alexander in there as well. And now Holy Cross takes over. Nine and a half to play in the fourth. Up the gut. It's Woods. And Nick Woods, good enough to move the sticks. That's the eighth first down for Holy Cross. As they continue to feed it to Woods. Yeah, just running a power play right there. And, you know, St. Francis Prep's D-line has to do a better job. You, if you're not being blocked, you can't be just running upfield. You're probably getting trapped. Javier, the handoff. Woods, back-to-back -back carry. Shakes his first defender. Goes into the secondary. And then a pickup of seven. Uh, Woods, Woods is starting to run real hard, but I don't know if he's cramping. But he tried to get up, and he went right back down. Well, remember, he's coming off that ACL injury a year ago, and you hope that... That's what scares me right yeah. now. Because he literally stood up after the run, and they held him so he didn't fall down. So while he gets held off, we'll take a quick break on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network. The home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. 
So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. After the injury timeout, Terrence Alexander up the gut and is denied. Ball comes out afterwards. And they'll say that Alexander was down. And you notice it's two very different style of runners. Alexander is more shifty, and I don't want to say he's faster, but he's just got a different type of gear. All right, where Woods, he's like a bowling ball, man. You get in front of him, he's just going to roll you right down to the ground. He's going to run through you. He's not going to run around you. He's going to run through you. Mm -hmm. First time we've heard the crowd be this loud tonight. St. Francis Prep trying to knock off their rivals and get a big stop on third down. It's third and three from the 47. Javier, hard count, a jump, and another penalty against the Terriers. That's number nine on the day for St. Francis Prep. It should be a first down. Or Holy Cross, but the officials will talk it over. I'm going to say he didn't go over the line of scrimmage. He jumped. But I'm going to say he didn't. Go, I don't think he crossed. There's confusion. I see the one official speak, uh, pointing at Kareem Vesup, number 52. Yeah, I, yeah, they're going to say he jumped. Didn't look like he went over the line of scrimmage. Yes, he jumped, but you still have to go over the line of scrimmage. I don't think that was as clear cut as some of the other ones. But I don't either way. What are we up to? Nine? Yep. We've nine for fifty five yards. Eight of them have been offsides. Yep. Or legal procedure. So first and 10 from the 42-yard line, 7.15 to go. Alexander on first down. Sees an opening, sleds ahead inside the 30, and backs out of bounds. Going to be another hold at the point of attack. Every time he dips in and then bounces out, there's a holding penalty. And the first thing that you want to do is say, oh, how are you holding him? Why are you holding him? But it's a combination of the dip in and out. And then the, once you're blocking a guy out, you're expecting your running back to cut underneath. What happens is when he starts underneath and then dips out, the defender is going to now look to the outside. So naturally, you just grab. You know, it's kind of a reaction. You're just going to reach and grab so he doesn't pull him down. Even if you don't hold him, you just grab him. At the point of attack, an official is going to see that. Yeah. So first and 20. Alexander bounces off again. Gets the 10 yards and plus more. As Alexander, doesn't matter where you pin back Holy Cross, the way that he's been running, continues to pick up positive yardage for the Knights. And I'm going to say this right now, real happy for Woods that he's back in the game. He just absolutely laid out one of St. Francis Prep's okay. defensive ends. Then, then if it work for you, Great block. If it work Sprung Alexander to the outside. But just the fact that he's back in the game healthy after knowing that he had the ACL last year, I'm very happy for that young man. Oh, it's a senior from Brooklyn lining up in the backfield. Alexander again has the first down into the secondary and tackle from behind by Melendez as he stays in bounds. Looks like he's hurt right now. I think he fell on top of the ball. But you see the momentum right now. You have two players down. You've got Kareem Vesup who's down for St. Francis Prep. And then you've got uh, Alexander who's down 
on the sidelines as well. Yeah, I think he just fell on the ball on the tackle. I think he got the wind knocked out of him. We're going to take a quick break while they get assessed on the field. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network. The home for New York High School sports. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at varsitymedia.net. Six minutes remaining in regulation with Holy Cross leading St. Francis Prep 14-12 as the Terriers have taken four of the last five matchups in the Battle of the Boulevard. Yandiel Javier back out under center with Woods in the backfield. And Woods shakes off a few tacklers and still manages to get forward and get back to the line of scrimmage. St. Francis Prep bringing the house and not able to knock down Woods right away. And now another down Holy Cross player. As I checked that, everyone's good now, so never mind. Fella came on a, an inside blitz, made contact five yards in the backfield, but because he was too high, Woods just bounced off. You got to tackle low. We talked about that. If you tackle somebody low, wrap around the legs, they'll go down. You tackle somebody like Woods, who's built like a bowling ball, and that's a compliment. It's not an insult. He is big. He is strong. All right? You're going to bounce off him. And Feli is a very strong, strong football player. He's all over the field. He's built. He's strong. But that's what I'm saying. He lost that matchup. So instead of having second and 15, it's second and 11. So timeout taken on the field, and we'll take it as well with 4.39 to go in the fourth quarter, 14-12 lead. Or check that, we're going to stay here. 4.39 left in, Holy Cross knocking on the door, and a touchdown would give them the 20-12 lead, the extra point that makes it a two-score game for St. Francis Prep. So a huge opportunity for Holy Cross to step on the jugular for Saint, uh, against St. Francis Prep. Well, this is, the, this is the time to do it. You score here, you're up eight. Now, you would think you kick the extra point to make it a two-possession game, but how confident are you with your kicker, even with going uh, with the win? So, you know, if you could make this a two-possession game right now with St. Francis Prep, having a little bit of issues going against the win, not with the win, you know, you could be sitting there saying, hey, this rivalry is ours. Well, St. Francis Prep and Holy Cross trying to get to the NYCH SFL Championships, and Varsity Media will be streaming them all football season long and the championships here at Mitchell Field coming in mid-November. 4.39 to go, second and 10 from the 18. And another flag. That's offside against the Terriers once more. That's their 10th penalty, and Kareem Vesup seems to have hurt himself, and now he can't get up, and you have to wonder if that injury is the reason why he popped over, but either way. It's going to be tough for St. Francis Prep if they just continue to give Holy Cross yardage, and we'll take a quick break here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network. The home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. 
From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Back here on the Varsity Media Sports Network, 439 to go in regulation. It is the Battle of the Boulevard as Holy Cross and St. Francis Prep battling down to the wire, a two-point lead for Holy Cross. And in speaking to Tim Smith earlier in the week, he's been around the block for a while, and, you know, he had four kids, a couple of them actually attending both Holy Cross and St. Francis Prep. Trinity Smith, um, his oldest daughter, at St. Francis Prep, uh, now runs hurdles for URI. And we'll get you the rest of the family in a second as it's heaved to the end zone, incomplete. Javier tried to find the receiver on the back shoulder, as that looked to be Jeremy Shaw, but incomplete. Yeah, way underthrown. I don't know if he was just trying to get it up in the air, but just underthrown. But take a look, so there's Jarrell Smith. As well, class of 2004, St. Francis Prep, and Tim Smith, Jr., graduate from Holy Cross. Jaden Smith, a 2020 grad from Holy Cross as well. And this game used to mean a lot, uh, it still means a lot, but there is Tim Smith himself galloping forward and a part of the coverage. I think that was the Daily News. Was that a grass field? Yeah. <laughs> Don't see too many of those anymore. No, no. The way this is going, you won't see too many Achilles anymore. Yeah. Third and five from the 14. Alexander, Holy Cross needs a first down, and Alexander towards the pylon. It's going to be close. Clock's still going, so they're calling him inbounds. And if it was a first down, the clock would stop. So I'm assuming he's short. Yeah, so not the worst thing in the world for Holy Cross to be short. And we'll take one more look. It's a little bounce play outside. Whether he gets this or not, I mean, you look at where the ball is. Ball's on the 10, nine and a half yard line right now. Even if they don't get this, against the win, Prep has to go 91 yards. Now, a field goal could put them a, you know, in a lead or win the game possibly, so you don't really have to go a true 91. But it's not easy right now. So he stopped the clock on the field. The officials conferring. And it looks like they're going to put some time back on the clock as it gets radioed up to the press box. But regardless of time, it'll be fourth and short. And Holy Cross is going to go for it. And they're going to send out Anton Williams, who was the original starter. And the very rotund, mound-round quarterback to try and get that extra yard and push St. Francis Prep back. Will it be the tush push? <laughs> and you got Woods right behind him and Alexander behind Woods. Well, they're going to bring everybody inside the A, B, and C gap. So if they want to just surprise them, maybe a little toss to Alexander, he could go untouched into the end zone. Prep cannot afford to take a penalty. Going forward, there's the flag. And it's funny because he dropped the ball on the snap. And it's an offside again regardless. Holy Cross will have the first down. Unbelievable. They're still talking. The offsides. And so it'll be first and goal. And you called it. You said you just hope they don't go off sides. And, and if you want to know the difference in this game, it's penalties. Which is interesting because St. Francis Prep has committed 11 penalties for 65 yards and Holy Cross only six penalties, but that's 60 yards as well. So still pretty close, but it just seems so one-sided with St. Francis Prep almost doubling up the penalties to Holy Cross. Yeah, ten of them have been offsides and basically false starts. Or false starts. And it's either stop drives or kept drives going. Williams. Bootleg. 
Carries it himself to the end zone. Touchdown. Great call. Anton Williams. His second touchdown of the day. This time from five yards out. Gives Holy Cross a little breathing room in the Battle of the Boulevard as the Knights go up eight late in the fourth. Yeah, welcome to varsity football, son. Look at that. They pull the guard around. There's nobody out there. St. Francis Prep sold out to the A and B gaps, brought eight, nine, ten guys into those gaps. There was nobody outside. Good ball fake. Great play call, Coach Smith, or your offense coordinator. Nice job with that. Now, we talked about this before. How confident are you with your kicker? You're up eight. An extra point makes it a two-score game. But they kept their offense on the field. Yeah, so there's your answer. As Javier in the shotgun. And a timeout taken by Holy Cross with 3.36 remaining in the fourth. And regardless if Cross goes for two or one, it'd still be a two-score game if Cross gets into the end zone. So for St. Francis Prep, it's starting to look pretty late uh, here in this contest. And credit Holy Cross, they stood with it. And there you see another look back in the day. That was a St. Francis Prep win, 24-6 uh, the win, and that was those games used to be uh, featured in the newspaper a lot, and that was uh, done by John Bowell, who was actually on a varsity media broadcast earlier in the week uh, at, at the Amityville soccer game, so good to see uh, it there. But St. Francis Prep looking for that victory. It'll have to be a comeback as Holy Cross – Leads it by eight with 3.36 remaining in the fourth. If I'm St. Francis Prep right now, I'm not thinking they're going inside. I think they're going to do some kind of play action or roll out here. The receivers are real tight, so it looks like they're going to try to get outside. It could be a cr some kind of a, a zone or a bounce. Javier the handoff. Reverse. And it's Glauden. Isaac Glauden ranges wide, gets past the secondary, but not into the end zone. He's short. And so the two-point conversion, unsuccessful, and that leaves the window open for St. Francis Prep. Absolutely. Great job defended. Once I saw their wideouts in real tight, not split wide, usually that's a telltale sign that you're trying to get everybody sucked in, that you're going to run something outside, whether it's a crack back and run a bounce or a reverse or something like that. So good job by Coach Carroll and his staff on recognizing that. Our next football broadcast next week, West Hempstead against Cold Spring Harbor Friday night under the lights at Cold Spring Harbor as Cold Spring Harbor now with uh, a bunch of the injuries to Malvern, an opportunity to win that conference four. They'll take on a young West Hempstead team on the Varsity Media Sports Network. That conference four is wide open with, you know, Mr. Brown being hurt, a couple of their running backs being hurt. So, you know, Seaford, I still think Seaford's got the, the lead, them in North Shore right now. But Cold Spring Harbor's having a good year, and they got a shot. Good kick. And so Tommy Zullo in the offense will take over at the 20-yard line. And St. Francis Prep trying to tie it up. And, of course, be sure to follow us on social media as well by scanning the QR code on the top, top left portion of your screen. All right, this is pretty much close to do or die right now for St. Francis Prep. You know, you got 3.28 to go. You did use a timeout, so you only have two timeouts left. So let's see what Zulo and his offense can do. I'm expecting them to be, you know, go heavy on Zulo and phase on and look for Buchanan to make a play right now. Zulo, quick hitter. He's got Buchanan. And right on cue, Peyton Buchanan. Pick up of eight. Now, I'm telling you right now, if you are Holy Cross, defend the flats because they're going to go short passes. Can't throw the ball long here. All right, they just, it, and it has nothing to do with Tommy Zulo's arm. 
it's this is a very strong win. So they're going to look to hit spot routes, slants, outs. Second and two. Zulo, the rollout. Throws off his back foot, incomplete. In the direction of Faison. And as the secondary swarms over to him. And that was Glauden and Terrence Avon in coverage. This is the St. Francis prep schedule. We've got one more game after today. They take on Holy Trinity next week on the road. Holy Trinity will see who is healthy for that game. Tough loss today against St. Anthony's. 41-14 the final. Now you don't have to abandon a run here. You got plenty of time and still two timeouts. You gotta get the first down. There it is again, just a quick out. And incomplete to Buchanan. Not decision time. Do you punt? Now, I'm looking at Zulo right now and he's holding his wrist. He's shaking his right hand. So if I'm the defense coordinator right now, over on the other side, I'm seeing that. I'm sending pressure. I'm playing the run before the pass right now. So I'm going to come with six, maybe even a seven-man pressure, play zero coverage, let him try to beat me. When I see a quarterback shaking his wrist, I'm going to let him beat me with, his, with him throwing the ball. Fourth, I'm going to take it away. Fourth and two, Tommy Zulo back out there in the gun. And the rollout. Blitz coming, steps up, Zulo ahead. And dragged down, but has the first down. Nice heads up play by Tommy Zulo. Again, using his legs. He's played a very good game. He's been under duress, under pressure all game. He's used his legs, he's made plays. I'm expecting him right now to throw something towards the sideline, maybe even their sideline. Zulo fakes, and Holy Cross was all over it. Frankie Valvo nowhere to go as he gets bottled up. Almost looked like a Statue of Liberty play or like a, some kind of a draw. Now using a timeout. And so St. Francis Prep will talk it over. And they'll have two timeouts remaining and take another look. Let's see. Yeah, just a speed draw. Okay, they... They dash to one side and then they slip the ball in the hips. And so with 2.49 remaining in the fourth quarter, St. Francis Prep now trying to come back into this game. And, you know, the Battle of the Boulevard, you just never know what you can expect. And for St. Francis Prep trying to have one last gasp, getting to the end zone, and then convert. They're 0 for 2 when it comes to those two-point conversions. And as you take a look at the last few meetings with this crew, Holy Cross looking for their first victory since 2021, a 30-15 win in the Battle of the Boulevard in Queens. St. Francis Prep winning last year around this same time, 25-14. Zulo back to pass. Steps up and dragged down again. But Zulo with the pickup of six after the run. All right, giving him a little bit of a chance. You got third down now in about seven yards. Again, if you're Holy Cross right now, you're playing the flats, you're playing the spot, but you should have somebody spying Zulo right now. Because how many times has he hurt them on a scramble with his legs. And this is not, this is not what he, St. Francis preps comfort zone, throwing the ball. Third and seven, Zulo darts it over to Buchanan. He's got a first down, close to midfield, past the 45. Plenty of time, no, no need to panic right now. Clock stops every time the sticks are moving until they get set. Still have timeouts left. Alexander with the takedown. Zulo 
Skips it, he's got Corderolo. Sebastian Corderolo shakes one defender and gets close to the first down marker. And the line judge looking over. And they're stopping yes. the clock. That's close. That could be a measurement. Now, that last play right there, the, the running back stuck out of the backfield. If you ever wanted to set up a hook and ladder, it's there. Because there was one corner out here, and on that little curl or spot route, that running back comes down the sideline. I'm telling you, it's there. If there's somebody in the booth right now and saw that, I would be all over saying, hey, I'm telling you right now, if we run a hook and ladder, it, it's wide open. Just the way they're playing their coverages right now. And so it looks like they're going to bring him out for a measurement. And so we'll see if St. Francis Prep got it. Be pretty close and short. Right now, Prep should be saying, all right, call your next play. Get the first down, call two plays in a huddle. Get a short run, get your first down. Don't worry about spiking the ball and have your next play called, which is basically what they're doing right now. As soon as the referee moves, he blows the whistle, the ball should be snapped. to put the correct down marker on there too. So be second and short. Three receivers near side. And Zulo into the flat. He's got Faison. He's got the first down and skips out of bounds. Well, like you said, dink and dunk, dink and dunk. That's what St. Francis Prep has been doing efficiently in this ball game. Yes. Anytime they've had their drives, that's what they've done. They're just playing very, very soft coverage right now. They're playing a one high safety and just playing very soft. They're giving too much of a cushion. Zulo. Faison again. And that's a combination that's been working as Faison has another grab. Four catches, 45 yards for Troy Faison. And sets up second and five. The outside linebackers slash hangers should be dropping to the flat. If they're playing some kind of cover three, or if they're playing cover one, which is man, nobody's dropping to the flat. They're giving the flat up all day. Zulo with some time, steps up and brought forward. As Zulo continues to power ahead, move the sticks. It's another first down. Plenty of time. 128 ball to 24 yard line. I'm not sure if I agree with huddling up right here. Well, St. Francis prepped with two timeouts remaining. And 117 and rolling. Trailing by eight. Zulo. On the run, flings it, incomplete. Tried to connect with Buchanan. As yeah, that was Braden McMahon in coverage. Had him. Had him. Tough throw on the run. He does a nice job creating time for himself, though, moving the pocket. He's got good feet. Now would be a great time for some kind of a double move, a double post, and then run a wheel behind it. But again, their offense is not geared to throw the ball. Their offense is geared to run the ball. Does the captain, Tommy Zulo, have a comeback in him? There's the wheel up. For, oh, we have Here him. comes the Knights defense bringing him down. Sacked in the backfield, Nick Servito. And it looked like Shanir Hester was there as well, the freshman. 
They did try to run a wheel up at the top of the screen. And so Zulo thought he had some time. Yeah, the freshman. Yep, Sincere Hester, how about that? Celebrate, young man, you, you deserve that one. So 101 remaining in the Battle of the Boulevard. This has been a fun game and a should be a fun finish. And we take a look at St. Francis Prep and their history. Some of their famous alumni too, Lombardi, Torrey, and Marco Battaglia. Some are saying that you're uh, Vince Lombardi after the uh, victory yesterday for St. Francis, uh, for, excuse me, for Massapequa. I had nothing to do with it. I love being part of a great staff. Spoken like a true diplomat. Uh, it's the truth. Working for Coach Shippos is awesome. He does a great job. He lets us all coach our positions and stuff. It's awesome. Third and long. Zulo drops back, bumps into his own guy, flings it towards Buchanan, incomplete. You can see he was disrupted. Valvo stood in front of him. Yeah. And either way, it's incomplete. And it goes down to one player right now. It's funny because he saw him on the post and he just threw the ball behind him. Now, right now, Coach Carroll's got to give him a little bit of confidence right now because you saw him put his hands on his head. He, he looks very dejected. He's played a great game. Not easy to throw the ball against his win. He's got to come up with some kind of a play right here. I would be spying him. On fourth down, a whistle. Timeout by Holy Cross. And so Smith calls the timeout, preserving some time. But if you are Tim Smith, what are you telling that Holy Cross huddle? I'm telling them to play. Well, first of all, I'm moving my secondary back. If I'm playing cover four, I'm going to move them back to about the 14-yard line by the sticks. I'm going to loosen up my linebackers. I'm going to have somebody spying the quarterback right now so he doesn't get out of the pocket and do something with his legs, and I'm going to rally to the ball. Make him throw the ball in front of the sticks and rally. That's exactly what I'm telling my team. And bat down any pass. Yeah, don't, don't intercept it. Just bat it down. Don't tip it, and don't let anybody get behind you. Because that happens a lot when you're sitting there saying, all right, you're going to play the sticks, you're going to loosen up. But all of a sudden, somebody says, oh, I'm going to make a double move at the stick. Next thing you know, they're behind you. Fourth and 14. This could be the ball game. 55 seconds left to go in the fourth. Tommy Zulo. Come Back on. to pass. Here comes the blitz. Rolls out of it. Zulo flings it. It's caught. Incomplete. Check that. Incomplete. And the Holy Cross Knights hold on. Say the ball bounced. What a great, great scramble, great throw, great effort. Making a play with his legs. Well, it looked at first like Buchanan had it, Can't but really. did not haul it in the entire way. They say it's incomplete, and Holy Cross will take over. It looks like they'll survive as Quartarolo. Not too happy with that. No, that's a tough play right there because his arms look like he, when he slid, it looked like his arms were under it. But we're up here, even with the replay, it's, it's hard to see, you know, if that ball hit the ground, if it bounced or not. Some good sportsmanship going on already. One of the linemen from Holy Cross went all across the line of scrimmage, was already shaking hands, and... Tapping on a helmet. And so victory formation for Holy Cross. As they will hold on and win the Battle of the Boulevard. 20 to 12. And pick up their first victory over St. Francis Prep since 2021. As the first career varsity start for Antoine Williams sees him score two TDs in the victory. Terrence Alexander has himself a day as Holy Cross will pick up their fourth win of the year and move to 500.
One more kneel down. And just a good overall effort by Holy Cross in the second half, Mike. Yeah, great game. It's, you know, it came down to the mistakes. It came down to all those offsides and legal motions. You know, and the good thing is right now, yeah, you lost a rivalry, but your season's not over. You know, right now you have to get yourself ready for one more game and you have to get yourself ready for the playoffs. We'll take a break. And when we come back, we'll have our Bagel Parlor post-game show on the Varsity Media Sports Network. The best breakfast or lunch in town? Look no further than Bagel Parlor in Whitestone. Offering hand-rolled kettle boiled bagels baked throughout the day, with hot and made-to-order egg sandwiches, omelets, and wraps, Bagel Parlor is more than just bagels. Offering a complete line of Boar's Head cold cuts, homemade chicken cutlets, and signature sandwiches. Not to mention the baked danishes, bomboloni, and pastries. Last but not least, a full catering menu that includes your Italian favorites. Bagel Parlor. Respect the tradition. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Hey, sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. Hey, this is Solomon Thomas with the New York Jets, and you're watching Varsity Media. Looking for the best breakfast or lunch in town? Look no further than Bagel Parlor in Whitestone. Offering hand-rolled kettle boiled bagels baked throughout the day, with hot and made-to-order egg sandwiches, omelets, and wraps, Bagel Parlor is more than just bagels. Offering a complete line of Boar's Head cold cuts, homemade chicken cutlets, and signature sandwiches. Not to mention the baked danishes, bomboloni, and pastries. Last but not least, a full catering menu that includes your Italian favorites. Bagel Parlor. Respect the tradition. Best breakfast or lunch in town? Look no further than Bagel Parlor in Whitestone. Offering hand-rolled kettle boiled bagels baked throughout the day, with hot and made-to-order egg sandwiches, omelets, and wraps, Bagel Parlor is more than just bagels. Offering a complete line of Boar's Head cold cuts, homemade chicken cutlets, and signature sandwiches. Not to mention the baked danishes, bomboloni, and pastries. Last but not least, a full catering menu that includes your Italian favorites. Bagel Parlor. Respect the tradition. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Hey, sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. 
Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. Hey, this is Solomon Thomas with the New York Jets, and you're watching Varsity Media. Looking for the best breakfast or lunch in town? Look no further than Bagel Parlor in Whitestone. Offering hand-rolled kettle boiled bagels baked throughout the day. With hot and made-to-order egg sandwiches, omelets, and wraps, Bagel Parlor is more than just bagels. Offering a complete line of Boar's Head cold cuts, homemade chicken cutlets, and signature sandwiches. Not to mention the baked danishes, bomboloni, and pastries. Last but not least, a full catering menu that includes your Italian favorites. Bagel Parlor. Respect the tradition. Best breakfast or lunch in town? Look no further than Bagel Parlor in Whitestone. Offering hand-rolled kettle boil bagels baked throughout the day. With hot and made-to-order egg sandwiches, omelets, and wraps, Bagel Parlor is more than just bagels. Offering a complete line of Boar's Head cold cuts, homemade chicken cutlets, and signature sandwiches. Not to mention the baked danishes, bomboloni, and pastries. Last but not least, a full catering menu that includes your Italian favorites. Bagel Parlor. Respect the tradition. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Hey, sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast. Back here on the Bagel Parlor post game show, the winners of the Battle of the Boulevard. It's Holy Cross as they knock off St. Francis Prep. I'm joined by our players of the game. We've got uh, Terrence Alexander, we've got Isaac Lawden, and QB1, Yadiel uh, Javier. And uh, we'll start with you. Uh, let, let's talk about the emotions. First win for you guys. Feel to win the Battle of the Boulevard first. This is this what we came for. It feels amazing. No, no words. 87 yards on the ground. What was working so well for you? Lyman, working every day in practice, telling him to keep their head straight, and it's gonna work. We're gonna come out with the victory. And Isaac, it felt like the defense really came together as a whole. What can you say for the defensive side of the ball? Defense side of the ball, we have to just come down, hit. No player is gonna like getting hit every single play. So every team, every play, we gotta just come down and hit. Call out things. Communication is key when you're playing defense. So when you have communication, any defense can work. And for you, you had your couple of sweeps in there, some positive yardage. What was working well for you? Me, I know I'm a lot faster than a lot of people in this league. So I try to use my speed. Sometimes I just stop, but when I did take my speed, it was very beneficial. So. All right, Mr. Javier, let's have you get a little bit closer over here, too. Uh, you know, you're under center, splitting some time, but what was working so well for the offense? The run game. I mean, the run game. We were pounding the ball, kept running it. We were, just, we were just doing great on the ball. I mean, we had a couple passes. Some of them were complete, some of them weren't. But, I mean, I just give credit to Rico. I give credit to, to Woods. I give credit to all of them. I mean, it was a great game. Great game. It's was, it was an unbelievable feeling that we won this game. Coach said that, obviously, this is one of the goals. But the ultimate goal, a championship, what does this win do for you for that guy's going forward? It, it, just, gives, it just gives more motivation, more motivation to keep it going. We're not done yet. We got one more goal, and it's to win that championship. We're not done yet. There you go. They said they're not done yet. Guys, you can hold up the trophy as well. It's going back over to Holy Cross as well. The battle of the Boulevard, Francis Lewis Boulevard to Holy Cross as they win it here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. That'll do it for everybody here. This has been a presentation of Varsity Media's Network. Captain, good fans. Good fans.